these are two receptors that are specific for cannabinoids. Yeah. But cannabinoids also, some of them bind to other receptors. There is one called 133, I think, GPR133. Um, there is a, another one which is GPR18. I may be mistaken on the numbers, but I think it's GPR18, GPR133, and so on. They are not specific for the cannabinoids, so there is a lot of discussion uh, between the pharmacologists. Should we call them in, um, cannabinoid receptors? The decision at the moment is, let's wait and see. At the moment, we have only two that have been approved uh, as cannabinoid receptors. All the others are with a question mark. Two receptors have been bought for certain specific conditions. Uh, but uh, uh, um, feeding, for example, appetite feeding, things of that sort. Uh, uh, but some of the other actions most definitely uh, go through other systems. We do not know enough on where they are. There are a lot of compounds, endogenous compounds, mm -hmm. which do a huge number of things. For example, I'll be talking tomorrow about a compound which, is called, which chemically is very closely related to an andamide, yet it does not bind to the receptor, but it, is a, 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 it has quite a few other effects. Uh, it's a vasorelaxant, for example. That's important because uh, when one gets a uh, head injury, there are many things happening at the same time. One of them is vasoconstriction. These compounds, or at least this compound, arachidonoyl uh, serine, this particular compound uh, is a vasorelaxant and it's produced by the brain. And chemically, it's very close to an andamide, yet it does not bind to the cannabinoid receptor. Mm -hmm. There are other things, for example, in, in the bone. We have uh, endogenous compounds like R2 AG, which acts uh, and uh, lowers the damage of osteoporosis. Okay. It increases osteoblasts and reduces osteoclasts. And which receptor that goes through? Which receptor? CB2, but well, mostly CB2. It acts on CB1 as well, but not directly, indirectly. But we also have an additional compound. For example, in the bone, we're speaking about bones, there is a compound, oleyl serine, which is chemically related to, uh, to an antibiot, and but it does not bind to the receptor, and yet it, it, it lowers uh, uh, the damage of osteoporosis.